We now go to the gentlelady from New York, Ms. Maloney. Thank you, and I, I agree with Mr. Chavez completely that there should be equal exchange of information, that we should have access to all information. But the Democratic minority was denied access to a witness. The only way we knew anything about what Mr. Thompson was going to say was what we read in the press. Now, there should be equal access to witnesses, and there should be equal access to information. Would the gentleman yield? Uh, on your time. May I? I well, hold the clock. Uh, because okay. you made an allegation, I don't understand. We, we, we didn't have a transcribed interview with two out of the three witnesses. Mr. Thompson was not made available to either. Mr. Nordstrom was, in fact, a previous witness, and we felt that there was sufficient information about what he felt. And Mr. Hicks, I think you went through five hours on a bipartisan basis. Uh, we forwarded their, their statements, not ours, their statements. We participated not at all in preparation. We forwarded them to the minority as we got them, period. So I'm a little bit concerned only in that it, it, there's, nothing, there's nothing fair about partisan politics, but I believe we've fully complied deliberately with the spirit of the rules all along. Uh, so I would hope the gentlelady, when better informed, would appreciate that, that uh, we uh, we've tried to be very forthcoming. Now, remember, but, these but are Mr. whistleblowers. Chairman, I, I, we are, I'm all for equality, and, I, and we did get uh, copies of uh, Mr. Hicks's statements and Mr. Nordstrom. But your staff met with Mr. Thompson. Our staff was not allowed to meet with Mr. Thompson. But he's represented. He's, uh, it's just not true. I'm, I'm, no, you, you didn't we, meet with him. We, no, it's, it's true that we have some have had some meetings with him, but we, we haven't prohibited or in any way. He's not our witness. But the gentleman later yield. He's Absolutely. a whistleblower that came forward. Yeah, let, let me let me. I'm so glad we are stopping the clock. You, you are stopping the clock, right? We need to clear this up. Um, well, I don't think there's anything to clear up. No, These I'm just a whistleblower. Uh, yeah, and 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 we want to protect whistleblowers. That's very very important to us. We the first thing we we have not gotten a syllable. Uh, from you've had conversations with Mr. Thompson. We've never had a conversation with with Mr. Thompson. I see you looking over here, Mr. Gowdy, and you know that's not fair. And so what? Okay. So all I'm saying to you is that it, it's we have a witness that came in here today that you had an opportunity to interview. Well, I, I appreciate that. The, the, and we never had that opportunity. The, the, well, you know what? Stop the clock for one second. One one quick question. I'm asking the witnesses, Mr. Thompson. Is it your decision who you talk to, and did we ever, any of my people, ever tell you not to talk to the Democratic minority? And I'm not accusing you of that. No. Okay, Mr. Hicks, have we ever suggested that you not talk to the minority, any of their people? No. Mr. Nordstrom, has anyone on my staff or any of my members ever asked you not to speak to them? No, in fact, I spoke with both. both sides. Thank you. That's resolved. The gentlelady may continue. Well, we did request to meet with Mr. Thompson, and through his lawyer, he said no. But he did speak to the, to the uh, Republican staff. I, I'd, I'd like to go back to Mr. Chavitz's uh, or other people's questioning about uh, Cheryl Mills's uh, phone call. And in reading the transcripts of it, uh, Mr. Hicks, uh, you, you, you told our investigators that she did not seem happy when she heard that no other State Department official was in the classified briefing. Is that, is that true? She was unhappy that her minder her, uh, the, the lawyer that came with Congressman Chaffetz was not included in that meeting. Was she unhappy that no other State Department official was included? That, just that State Department official? That State Department okay. official. And, and you also said that she never criticized you. And according to your interview transcript, you said she never gave you any direct criticism. Do you stand by that statement today? The statement was clearly no direct criticism, but the tone of the conversation, and again, this is part of the Department of State culture, the fact that she called me and the tone of her voice, and we're trained to gauge tone and nuance in language, indicated to me very strongly that she was unhappy. And I just, okay, if I may... Go, go, my time is limited. Going okay. to the uh, diplomatic post in uh, Benghazi, as I understand it, uh, the uh, British ambassador's convoy was attacked uh, a gentleman was killed, and they decided to pull out of Benghazi. Is that correct? I don't believe anyone was killed. I believe we saved w the okay. life of one of uh, one of those people. I'd like shot. to defer to Eric and, because no, he no, was actually the, RSO the point, there. The, my question is: Did the British ambassador close the post in Benghazi and leave? 
He did. He did. Do you I think it was wise? That, though. He, they, they, Excuse me. Claiming my time, I, I will yield if somebody wants me to yield, but I wanted to ask, when we continued to stay there, do you think that was a wise decision for us to continue to stay in Benghazi after the English uh, had closed their post and, and left? Absolutely. Why was it important for us to stay in Benghazi? We needed to stay there as a symbolic gesture to a people that we saved from uh, Gaddafi during the revolution. As we know, Gaddafi's forces were on the doorstep of Benghazi right before the NATO bombing commenced. And as a gesture, again, as I said before, Chris went there to be as a symbolic gesture to support the dream of the people of Benghazi to have a democracy. And so he shared your position that staying there was incredible. And he important. also b understood from the secretary herself that Benghazi was important to us and that we needed to make it to be a permanent constituent post. Now, I agree with my uh, good friend on the other side of the aisle, Trey, that uh, it was a long time before the FBI got on the ground. And uh, as I understand it from a report that they gave us, they got the visas right away. Uh, the day of the Ambassador Rice's appearance on the Sunday shows, September 16, the Libyan government granted the FBI the visas so that the team could travel to Libya. Their flight clearance was granted the following day on September 17th, and the FBI arrived in Tripoli on September 18th. And according to this report, the team could not travel to Benghazi for some time due to the security situation on the ground. Is, is that true? Were all of our people out of Benghazi? And were we not letting anyone in Benghazi? What exactly was happening then, uh, Mr. Hicks? Yes, the Libyan government did not want any of our personnel to go to Benghazi because of the security situation there. So when, when the FBI went to Benghazi, it was when the Libyan government felt that it was secure enough for them to go there. Is that a fair statement? We strung together a series of approvals at the mid to upper levels from the government and organized an es a military escort to go with the uh, FBI and special forces troops that escorted them as well. Thank you. The gentlelady's time is expired.